thing you really want to keep an eye on, especially when you're doing a native garden, is potential invasives and weeds that might come in with the plant. It's, it's, it's a symptom of all nursery stock. You're going to see, you can notice it, you can see this, the principal plant that's growing here, and you can see underneath there's a weed that's growing in the pot. Well, that weed is on its way to your garden if you don't try to control it when you're doing the planting. I'll usually have a wheelbarrow set aside. Um, I remove the plant from the pot. See if I can do that. <laughs> okay. And then you want to take the root and the plant, that's the weed, the unwanted, unwelcome species, and really take that right out with root and everything. You want to dispose of that. You don't want to throw it into your compost pile. Uh, you don't want to mix it in with the soil in the surrounding area. Here's another uh, same plant. Look at this succulent that's coming in, okay? No, I didn't pay for it. I don't want it. <laughs> I don't want it growing in the garden. I don't even know what it is. So be sure to grab it and its root and take it off the property. As a design element in a garden like this, you don't want to be afraid to repeat something. There's a stand of iris further upstream there. Um, down here in another wet area, you're going to see iris repeated. Nature does that. It'll have a clump of something somewhere. You won't see it for 50 feet or 75 feet. Then there'll be another clump. So you really want to get random with your plant placement, as long as you know where the plant, you know, what, how wet the plants want to be. Um, you can also see that I didn't just put one individual plant and then another different plant, another different plant. We've, plants tend to cluster. Um, these would grow out of their own rhizome. So really, once this uh, grows in, it'll look like a natural stand. So now you've seen how a rain garden works, how we take the water off the landscape, we create a swale. Um, it allows us to plant some beautiful plants. It really brings a dynamic uh, feature to the garden, something you can be proud of. Um, the question, I mean, aside from some of the interesting plants that only you could bring to your property and they only thrive because you have a rain garden, one of the great things about this and the reason they're catching on all over the country is because they're a beautiful, elegant way to manage storm water from your property. We've all got to think about how the impact of our development is affecting local ecology. A rain garden is a sweet, elegant way of taking some of the storm water that comes onto your property when you have heavy rain events and directing that water into an area where it can get the benefit of biofiltration. All these plants, these native plants here, will be helping to filter contaminants from that water. If this rain garden was at the end of an acre of lawn and the water that came off that lawn during a rain hit this rain garden before it made its way out into the street and out into our estuaries and our bays, this garden would perform a vital function of removing some of the contaminants that are in that rainwater, whatever pesticides and fertilizers might be on that lawn that get drawn off that lawn with heavy rains. They'd end up in this, in this super dynamic matrix the native plants would, would do a wonderful job at, at, at purifying that water before that water made its way into the groundwater and before it made its way into our bays and our surface water and our estuaries. We're now on the south side of the property where uh, this is where I started this project about five years ago. The clients called me. They had a problem with a wet basement. They also had uh, what I, I decided was an ecological problem here with uh, this lawn shedding down into the bay. Um, and what you can see above me is a roof, um, several thousand square feet. And what happens when it rains? A lot of water is coming down here. We devised this gravel drain with a Japanese stone on it. So it's a beautiful detail along the side of this house. Runs the whole length of the house. Um, rather than putting gutters like we did out front, we decided this was a nice solution. This gravel drain has a pipe in it, a perforated pipe, and that ends up exiting out over there, it's got a pitch underneath the gravel. The gravel's level, but the pipe is pitched. And what happens is this water is going into a swale that we created, which really has become a beautiful pond feature on the property. We've used native, mostly native species. We have some ornamental species that we've introduced in order to give it that Japanese garden feeling. Um, but as you can see, the contour of the land, we're, we've found a low spot here. We've made it easy on ourselves to create this beautiful uh, system that's happened over here. Um, uh, we've introduced a lot of native species and now they've been growing. This pond is, I think it's about three or four years old now. And if you look across the pond, you'll see the bridge. We just installed that bridge this spring. The similar type of bridge that we're going to do, a similar very primitive plank type bridge that we're going to do out in the rain garden in the front. Natural locust posts and white oak planks. 
So if you're deciding to create a rain garden on your property, it's a great opportunity to take some time, study the contour of your land. It's a great way to get into a relationship. Well, we're working on a site here that's three acres. You may have a half acre or a quarter of an acre. It doesn't matter. Go out into your landscape. Find a low spot. Let your imagination go wild. You're doing a wonderful thing for the local ecology. You create a dynamic presence on your property you can be proud of. And have fun with it.